Hello, uh, welcome back to a very, very quick video today. Um, we are back with yet another sour gas boiler build. Now, before any of you groan, this is the last one, I promise. Um, this is the smallest, easiest build I can make, literally. I can't get much easier than this. Um, I've listened to the feedback from the previous posts, and people were talking about, uh, for those of you who hadn't seen the previous two builds that I've done, the Sour Gas Tard and the Boombox. Uh, I'll give you a few links to those in the video description or some cards on your screen now. But the general feedback was, it's all well and good you're building something in debug, but it's going to be hard to build in a normal game. So, I've gone back to basics. We've got a much, much easier system here with very little automation, very, very easy piping, a little bit of gas piping, and this build is just beautiful. It gives us about one kilo a second output in terms of natural gas, uh, and it consumes just over about 1,100 kilojoules a cycle. It does vary a little bit, uh, but it's about between 1070 and 1100 kilojoules per cycle. That's basically two and a bit natural gas gens to run. Um, but it gives us enough natural gas to run 11 natural gas gens. So this is a little build. It will get you plenty of natural gas. Um, and yeah, it works like an absolute charm. So it, it should be a really simple, simple explanation here. Um, just like with the other builds, we've got an aqua tuna that is boiling our oil. Now our oil comes in from this little room here, um, and this is just some oil at like 99 degrees. Okay, I'll just pause it for a second. Um, the oil comes in through this pump. Now this pump feeds into a reservoir that's sat in our room, and this basically keeps you know a, a full tank of oil on hand. This reservoir is connected to this liquid shutoff pipe here, uh, liquid shutoff, uh, which is connected to our oil feed. Now, the liquid shutoff will come into a gold radiator and into a vent, okay? And this is triggered just by a little bit of automation in the room, which is just a hydro sensor, which is where our petroleum will normally sit. That's set to below 50 kilos, and an Atmos sensor, and that's set to below 20 kilos. And when both of these signals are on, it goes to an AND gate. When both of those are active, we get some more oil dumped into the system. And that's that's the, the supply of it. It really couldn't be easier. There's no automation on the pump. It's just fully powered and just fills up the reservoir as and when it can. Um, and the liquid shut off here just dumps us some oil in. Now, one thing I'll just mention, I've mentioned the gold radiant pipes here. I've tried to make this as cheap a build as possible in terms of the space materials. So one of the main feedbacks I got was that there was too much supercoolant being used in some of the bigger builds or too much thermium. So what I've basically done, this build takes around 300 kilos of supercoolant. That's allowing a little buffer in your reservoir as well and 1400 kilos of thermium. And that's just for the aqua tuna itself and four pieces of thermium pipe up here the rest of this is gold but where i want it to be thermium it is thermium so a couple of bits of pipe and the aqua tuna and that you can't really escape that if you want to do a little build like this now just to explain what's basically happening down here it's the same aqua tuna loop that we normally use so our super coolant is going through the radiator this way so this is our exit from our aqua tuna here and that goes down this pipe and this pipe goes into our build it goes through a couple of floor tiles here and then cycles into this little chamber. Now this little chamber is where our sour gas finds itself. So when our petroleum boils off, when it hits about 540 degrees, the sour gas bubbles up here and then can find its way into this chamber. Um, when it hits this thermium pipe, it pretty, pretty quickly turns into liquid methane, and that liquid methane is pumped straight away. Okay. Now, I did do some testing using a mini pump here, because a mini pump is moving about a kilo a second, so I thought that might be a bit cuter in the space. Um, but the mini pump takes a little bit more power. It's not quite as efficient as a full-size pump. So, uh, although it looks a bit more clumsy, it's better off using this pump. It's a little bit cheaper to run. Um, but then once the supercoolant has gone through the room, once it's done its cooling, you can see our supercoolant down here is at 100, minus 172 degrees. It's gone up this loop. And again, all these pipes here are out of ceramic, by the way. I'm not using any insulate or anything in this build. Uh, but it goes up this ceramic pipe, goes up through our little condensing room, and then hits this bridge and comes back here. And as you can see, it's minus 161 by the time it gets to this point, um, and then goes into our reservoir. Now, these temperatures do fluctuate a little bit, so occasionally you do get a little bit of your uh, liquid methane boils off. But then as soon as the natural gas packet finds its way back over to here, it'll condense again. And you'll end up with, um, it, it just basically will recirculate the gas, if you like. So this natural gas in a moment will disappear. Um, providing it stays in the room and then your sour gas can just flow up there 
Um, the the automation in this room is dead easy again. The pump itself has no automation. It's just pumping all the time. Whenever there's some liquid methane here, I want it to pump. I don't want any liquid methane to sit on this plate. I want it to suck it up straight away. There is a door here, and this door is just to prevent too much sour gas coming into this room. Uh, this door is just on an Atmos sensor with, if it's... Um, above 10 kilos of pressure at this point i want this door to shut and that just lets the sour gas pool up outside here this is on a filter gate and the filter gate is just set to three seconds so it has to have that 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 signal for three seconds before the automation toggles the door reason for that is if you do get a little bit of natural gas boils off here it can toggle the sensor and you don't want that um it'll just basically mean your door's trying to open and close constantly so a little filter gate means it has to be a signal for at least three seconds before that'll close um, I've explained all this down here. The aqua tuner itself, so the coolant is being fed directly in from the reservoir. Um, the coolant comes down this pipe, hits this pipe sensor here. There's a liquid pipe thermo sensor behind here, um, and then goes into the aqua tuner. Now, if the aqua tuner is toggled off, just like we've done before, the pipe carries on upwards, hits this bridge, and then goes into the output pipe. So, if our aqua tuner is dormant, if we don't want it to be running, if our coolant is cold enough then the liquid can just bypass it dead easy. And again, couldn't really be easier. It is a liquid thermosensor set to above minus 172. That is basically if, if the liquid, if the super coolant is colder than that, it can bypass um, dead, dead easy. Uh, up here, we have a little steam turbine. This is just if the room gets too hot. Um, we have a, hydro, a thermosensor here set to below 240 degrees. Again, it's on a filter gate. Uh, and that's set to five seconds. So if the room gets too toasty for a little while, the signal will come here, this door will close, which connects these two chambers and heats up our steam turbine. That gives us a bit more power every now and again. Only normally happens every, maybe every cycle, it happens briefly every other cycle normally, um, but gives us a little bit of power and cools the room down a little bit. Um, now our liquid methane, when we've picked up these little packets of liquid methane, that comes through a ceramic pipe up here. And you'll see these packets are all sort of varying sizes. This one's 1.6 kilos, this one's 1.9, this one's 2.2, 1.6, 1 1.6, 1.7. This just goes through the ceramic pipe and then into a vent up here. Okay, that vent, the liquid vent, drops the methane into here, where it pulls up and instantly boils. And I've got a metal tile here connected to the room. Okay, the vents themselves are just pumping constantly because this is producing just over a kilo. It's like 1.1 kilos or something. It's just over. Um, so the vents themselves, the, the pumps themselves are going constantly. And these go through a, a ceramic pipe, ceramic insulated pipe, before hitting a wolframite uh, radiant pipe. And that just takes our gas that is coming in at minus 109 degrees and uses some of that temperature in the gas to pre pre-cool our room a little bit it's pre-cooling the sour gas a little bit before it gets up here um so as you can see it goes from minus 109 minus 60 36 109 159 and so on um this was basically because i didn't need to be pumping gas over to here that was at minus 160 degrees it was just wasted temperature so i've absorbed some of the heat from the room and then that goes into a storage room with a vent like you've probably seen me done many many times before just an overpressurized vent in here for your storage now, as I say, this is producing enough gas from these two pumps to run 11 natural gas gens, uh, and it needs two of those, roughly, to power it. Well, just over two, uh, which gives you a surplus of another, what, nine natural gas gens just for power for yourselves. Um, and as I say, it's converting it at a one-to-one -one ratio, so for every bit of crude oil that we get, although we do lose a little bit for sulfur, um, for every bit of... Um, petroleum that's boiled into na into sour gas from crude oil we get two-thirds of that amount as natural gas so it's given us quite a throughput uh, as i say that's basically the build it couldn't really be any easier it's powered by by um, one circuit down here for the actual build itself and another circuit over here which is just given us a pump uh, and a liquid pump down here and one thing to point out as well, guys, this is base figures just based off the build itself. Obviously, natural gas gens do output water and carbon dioxide, so I've been collecting them down here, and we've got absolutely shed loads of both of those things as well. We've got loads of water and loads of carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide you can feed to slicksters to get more oil, and obviously polluted water is a resource in itself as well. So that's the, the basic premise of the build. Now, just a little aside, for those of you that are 
probably going to grumble at Thermium and the use of it in this build. I just thought I'd explain because a lot of people seem to be unaware of this. Um, thermium is, is not really a scarce material when you get to late game. Thermium is something that we can actually manufacture at the cost of a bit of Wolframite or Tungsten. So basically Thermium is, is made from Neobium. Neobium, you don't actually need masses of. The first rockets you send to space, your first steam rockets if you're lucky, um, you'll be able to actually get some Neobium, depending on what your starter asteroids are. Now, if you look at your molecular forge, you can take Neobium, 5 kilos of Neobium, and 95 kilos of Tungsten, and make Thermium. Okay? And if I press this button, because I'm in debug, that will give me 200 kilos of, uh, sorry, 100 kilos of Thermium. Okay, now if you then go to your rock granulator or a metal refinery, depending on what output you want, if you go to a rock granulator, you will get 50 kilos of niobium and 50 kilos of sand if you grind up your thermium. Okay, so you get 50 kilos of each. So that's 10 crafts of this recipe if you wanted to get yourself a load of thermium. So from this one bit of niobium that comes from this craft, you can do 10 further crafts at the cost of a bit of tungsten to get yourself an excess of thermium. If you don't have any use for sand and you've already got a refinery in place, you can actually convert it at one to one ratio. So 100 kilos of thermium becomes 100 kilos of niobium. All right, so that's how you get these late game materials. Super coolant, I'm, I'm really not even going to discuss. To get 300 kilos of super coolant is an absolute piece of piss. That is two crafts of the recipe. Um, molecular Forge, Fullerene, uh, Gold, and Petroleum will give you super coolant. And you get, sorry, 100 kilos per craft. So you'd need three, three kilos of Fullerene. Um, is it 50 kilos per craft of gold? I can't remember. 49.5 kilos of gold and 49.5 kilos of petroleum so it really is nothing to get this much super coolant that's literally three three crafts of the uh the recipe but yeah i will uh as usual i'll attach the save for you so you can have a play with it yourself it seems to be a lovely little mini build and i really genuinely can't get it much easier than this um it is as bare bones as i can make it and i think i'm done i've made it as small as i can so this is probably the smallest little build i'll play with for a while now as i say it gives you quite a bit of power for what it is it uses a little bit of oil dead easy to build i think this would be an absolute doddle to build in survival game as well got plenty of access liquid lock on the outside vacuum it all out and you can just hop across here with your dupes dead easy with a couple of pieces of ladder in the middle i think it'd be a piece of piss but yeah, I hope, uh, I hope that helps. Uh, any feedback, any suggestions, any tips, any improvements, let me know. Uh, I'm always interested to see how other people approach the same problems as I do. Uh, but yeah, guys, many thanks. Enjoy. Take care. Bye-bye.